next case to come before the court is State of Ohio v. Eric Dale Weber. Um, I believe the appellee has waived argument here, so unless you're waiting for somebody else to come, you have the podium all to yourself. You'll have up to 15 minutes to present your argument. Uh, you uh, uh, should know that the arguments are being recorded, so please introduce yourself and stay behind the podium. Keep your voice up. You should not use the names of children or minors or victims. Should that be relevant to your argument, you can use initials or generic terms to describe those folks. We have read your briefs, and we are your brief. We've read both briefs, but we've read your brief and are ready to proceed when you are. Your Honors, may it please the court, good morning. I'm Attorney Donald Pond on behalf of Appellant Eric Weber. The, the state has waived, obviously, and they've uh, conceded error. Uh, notwithstanding, uh, Mr. Weber would appreciate the opportunity to convey to the court that he seeks a full resentencing hearing, not a limited resentencing hearing. Um, the appellate division of the revised code authorizing appeals um, I reference uh, code section it's um, 2953.08 uh, obviously the court's very familiar with that section uh, specifically uh, subsection G2 um, and in that section it authorizes this court that if the um, sentence is clearly and convincing, you know, that the record does not support by uh, clear and convincing evidence that, uh, uh, that the sentence is contrary to law or that the consecutive sentence findings were not made, this court has a range of uh, options. Uh, the court may increase, reduce, or otherwise modify a sentence that is appealed under this section, or the court may vacate the sentence and remand the matter, remand the matter to the sentencing court for resentencing. That is the relief that Mr. Weber seeks here today. It's a remand for resentencing, a full resentencing. Uh, the state's brief uh, argued that the resentencing should be limited to whether the, uh, for, for the court to consider the consecutive sentence findings. It's our contention that uh, this court certainly is able to order that type of um, remand. But Mr. Weber uh, seeks more, in, in his eyes, he, he Practically speaking, the court, in my view, goes into a sentencing with an idea of, of the sentence that is going to be imposed, um, subject to hearing on the record from the parties, the prosecutor, defense counsel, defendant's allocution. Um, but in general, the court has a direction of, of where the court's going to go. We have a very detailed pre-sentence investigation report. It's a uh, uncomfortable... Counsel, counsel, yes. Counsel, before we go any further, I just want to make sure um, the argument on appeal is that the trial court did not make the required findings. Without the required findings, which the state, as you said, concedes were not made, without the required findings, this court is unable, is it not, to actually um, look at the sentence to determine whether there was any error or whether it's clearly and convincingly contrary to law. Because the whole point of findings is for that there to be uh, something for the uh, appellate court to review as to the rationale of the trial court in making those consecutive findings. 
In other words, it's premature, isn't it? Uh, pre what? Your argument about the sentence being inappropriate at this point is premature, isn't it? Because we haven't had the findings to, to review. Um, when you say the sentence is the nine months on each I'm count? talking about the whole sentence because the whole point of consecutive sentencing findings is to have something for the appellate court to review. In other words, we look at those findings and say, is the court just off in la-la land or not? You know, and, and obviously we don't do that. We do that in regard to the statute yes. um, and the requirements that are uh, uh, laid upon this court by the legislature and the trial court. Um, so all I'm saying is presenting to you that I'm not sure how we do that without findings. How do we look at the validity of this sentence without findings? Well, that's an interesting point. I, I view the matter as we have the court first considers the purposes and principles of sentencing and whether the court's going to impose community control sanctions or a prison term. Um, in this case, the court imposed a prison term and then clearly did not, and there's so much discretion allowed of trial courts for the imposition of sentence based on the purposes and principles uh, factors. But then the second part of the analysis is the whether those if the sentences, prison sentences are imposed, whether those sentences are going to be served concurrently or consecutively or some mix between concurrent and consecutive. So uh, I think this court, given the discretion that's uh, allowed to the trial court for the first phase of that sentencing, I, I don't want to use the word phase to mean it's necessarily two hearings, but the first set of considerations um, of whether prison is going to be imposed versus uh, community control, once we're past that point, we are to the consecutive sentence findings. And, uh, you know, the, I think the court, it, it's my view that there was some emotion um, underlying this sentencing hearing. I, I think defense counsel, if I'm, as I'm reading the transcript, I, I think defense counsel would like a replay of the sentencing here. I'll put it that way. Um, I think the, the statements by defense counsel trying to minimize the offenses uh, or make them less serious than they, they were in terms of the harassing statements that were made to 14 victims in this case over a period of um, over two months on many phone calls, uh, I, I think in a sense inflamed the court and um, I won't go so far as to say that that changed the imposition of a prison term, but it certainly did not help uh, Mr. Weber. And that's the relief that, that Mr. Weber would like to replay. And he would like to replay that based on the authority given to this court by the sentencing statute or the uh, appellate statute. Um, it, Your Honor, I may have been long-winded there, but have I answered your question? Uh, uh, you have answered my question, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and there is authority from this court it, both for a limited resentencing hearing, which the state has cited in its brief, those cases cited in its brief, in its brief but there is also authority for a full sentencing hearing we have uh, cases out of, I, I picked this district specifically, we have a um, case that is Clinton v. Markham, decided by this court in 2017, and in that case it was consecutive sentences and the court remanded for a full resentencing. There was no language in that remand for the court to have a limited resentencing for the purposes of whether the um, consecutive findings were made only. Uh, also, two years earlier, 
in uh, State v. Williams. Uh, this court uh, ruled similarly, um, and uh, that's a case out of Medina, 2015, Ohio, 2197. Again, this court uh, remanded for resentencing that was not a limited resentencing. And um, we would ask the court to adopt that posture when reviewing uh, Weber's, Weber's case. That, if, in a sense, if we have a limited resentencing hearing, it's, in, in a lot of ways, the matter is a foregone conclusion. Uh, the court doesn't have the full range of sentencing options before the court, but the fact is that when Mr. Weber goes back for resentencing, and I'm presuming that he'll get a resentencing, uh, I hope that's a safe presumption. I believe it is. That when he appears again for resentencing, um, if he's not given the full range of sentencing options, it would be unfair to him because when he is resentenced, he is going to be a different person. Uh, there will be a, a substantial gap in time between this sentencing hearing we're talking about uh, on appeal and the resentencing, which will occur months from now. He's going to be a different person. He, he, he's been in prison this whole time. And that should have a bearing on how the court views him as a person. Because how the court views a defendant, an offender as a person, goes to the purposes and principles of sentencing. So we're back to the beginning, that first set of analysis that has to occur. And um, I think that's fair to him. And we would, we would ask the court to recognize that allow him a full resentencing. I, I, I appreciate the court's time. I, I um, wanted to let Mr. Weber know that I, I appeared to make that argument and I did not anticipate that it would take the, that I would use the full 15 minutes and, and I'm ready to step away unless the court has anything else that uh, uh, I should address. Seeing no questions, we thank you very much for your presentation. The court will take the matter under advisement and issue a decision in due course. Uh, the uh, clerk of courts will mail a copy of the decision to you and opposing counsel on the day that it is released. And the opinions will also be posted on the Ohio Supreme Court website. Thank you again, counsel. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here today. Have a good day. Thank you. You too.